All right, so today I'm going to blow up buildings and then replace them after a period of time. But anybody who has pulled stuff out of the free models, the toolbox, knows that most of the buildings don't blow up, right? Because when people create the buildings, they anchor all the pieces together. And you don't want to have to go and unanchor everything and weld everything. So I made a script to do that as well as replace them, right? So I can blow up buildings as much as I want and then they'll be replaced. I made the replacement fast because of the video. In your game, you'd want it to be a couple minutes at least, right? So let's get a fresh world and see how that's done. All right, so here's my fresh world. I need a rocket launcher to blow things up. So I'm gonna go to the toolbox and marketplace. I'll do rocket launcher. Cool, I'll drag that Roblox rocket launcher in there. I'm going to drag this down to my starter pack so that it shows up in my backpack when I start. And then I'm going to, the free models I'm going to use, I just went through and I pulled the scripts off them because I don't trust other people's scripts, right? So there we go. I'll just pull these out here. Now, if we go to try to blow these up, they won't blow up because all the parts are anchored together. Nothing. Nothing. All right, let's change that. So let's go to our workspace and should we do it in a folder? No, let's do it in models. Let's go ahead and select our two shacks, right click, group them together, and then I'm gonna right click and group it again. I need two levels of model, right? So this one right here, the top level, I'm gonna call this explodables. Cool, and this level down here, I'm just gonna call this models so that I can keep track of my models. You can use folders or models. So on explodables, I'm gonna add my script. Script, cool. And I want it above this models because I wanna read these all in. That way, if I add something to my explodables, I just drag it into this models right here and my script is gonna pick it up and I'm gonna make it explodable. So we'll call this uh, rebuild. Cool. All right, so in our rebuild script, let's go ahead and make a couple functions. Local function, we're gonna do an anchor and I'm gonna save the welds because the welds, the condition of the welds is gonna determine whether the house needs to be rebuilt or not, right? We're gonna pass in a building. Cool, that's our first function. Our second function, we're gonna check to see if it's broke. I'm gonna call it is broken. Right. And this, I'm just going to pass in the welds for the building. Right. And then my third function, whoops, local function, I'm going to call this replace model. So if it's sufficiently damaged, we are going to replace it. We'll figure out what we need to pass in as arguments in a little bit. So let's go down to our last function, local function explodable. I don't know if explodable is even a word, so I don't know if it's spelled right. Models, but that's close enough. All right. So I need to read in these models right here. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say local. I'm going to call it build array script dot parent dot models get children, right? So that's my script. That's the parent models and then these are the children so that's an array of these two buildings cool all right now we need to make another array we're going to call this buildings because we don't want to blow up our originals we need those um we need to store them we're going to blow up copies buildings is going to hold the copies all right and then I need another array for welds. Cool. All right. Now I'm going to do a for loop. So for I, the number of things in build array, right, which is our models get children, right, and steps of one do. What do we need to do? I'm going to get the build array. Each one of these, this I is the element in the array. So each one is a building. 
I'm going to get the parent and I'm going to set it to nil. I'm essentially removing them from the workspace and then I'm going to cop, I'm going to put copies in the workspace, copies that have already been modified that can be explodable, right? So we'll say buildings, that's going to hold my copies, build array, I colon clone, cool. And then this buildings parent is going to be the workspace. So I just pulled the original out, stored it in an array for safekeeping, and then put a copy in, in its place. And that's all happening as we're starting. Right. And then I'm going to get my welds because welds is going to determine the health. And we'll do that when we do our unanchor. What do I call that? Unanchor and save welds right here, unanchor and save welds. We're going to pass in buildings I, right? So we're going to run that every through every single um, building in the build array. Cool. So that will actually put things in the workspace. Let's go ahead before we do any testing, let's go ahead and make our anchor and save welds so that we could blow things up before our first test. And then we'll check that it is broken in the replacement after that. So let's go up here and we'll say local um, pieces. I want to store all the pieces of my building in that pieces array. I'll say get descendants. I need to get models of submodels and stuff like that. Right? That's going to dice ball descendants, right? D E S C. Yes. I think that's right. I had to write it down. I can never spell the sentence. All right, we got that. We're going to make a local welds array. It's actually going to be a table. And what else do we need? Oh, we need a previous part because we're going to weld everything together. We want to take our part, put a weld on it, make one of those parts attached to the previous part. Right? So we're going to have this whole chain of parts welded together. I'm just going to use the workspace base plate. So if you don't have a base plate, you might have to make an anchored part somewhere in the world to use that. And let's see. We need a for loop for I and V in pairs. Ah, pieces do. All right. We're going to check to see. So I is one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. V is all the parts that I call them pieces. So pieces or parts, whatever you want to call them. We're going to check to see if it is a base part. Then, then we care about it, right? We are going to make can collide equals to true. So you might run into problems when you have models that have to have can collide turned off, like doorways you can run through. You're going to have to go through that and check. But this is going to be like a 70% solution. This is going to work for a lot of stuff. We can't have can collide as false because as soon as we unanchor it, it's going to fall through the world if it's not attached to anything. Well, like when we explode it, right? So let's go ahead and make a weld. I'll call it W. Instance new. It's not going to be a true weld. It's going to be a weld constraint. Weld constraint. And V is going to be the parent. V is the piece or the part, whatever you want to call that. So I'll say W. Uh, part zero will equal the previous part. If it's the first iteration of the loop, the previous part is going to be the base plate. So we're going to have one weld to the base plate, right? Then we'll say W part one is going to be welded to the part itself, right? Being the parent of it is not sufficient. You actually have to put one of the parts as the, uh, one of these as the other part of the weld in order to, to connect them. All right, so we'll have V anchored. This is the thing that's been messing us up. We're going to have to make that false so that things are going to fly around, right? Then we'll say the welds will use the key of the part and the value will be the weld. That's how we're going to store all our welds for our building, right? It's a key value pair, part to weld. Then I'm going to make the previous part equal to V. Cool. That's going to make the chain to welds all the pieces together. We will return 
welds. Awesome. Now we can blow things up. We can't replace them yet. Let's go in the world. Let's try and blow them up. This rocket launcher is not very powerful, but I think it's good enough. Oh, you know what we got to do? One more thing. We actually have to call this. All right? Don't forget to call your function. Boom. There we go. Now let's try it. I wasted like 30 seconds there. Darn it. All right. Bam! Yeah, that's more like it. In a true Roblox fashion, we have something floating around in the middle of the air. Ooh, you gotta be facing it. All right, you get the idea. Let's go ahead and replace the buildings after they've been sufficiently damaged. So, in our explodable models, we're gonna make another loop. And I probably could have made this a little more concise, but this will be pretty good. We're going to do a while loop. So this is going to check our health. Let's do a wait. And you might want this to be like a minute or something in your game. Uh, we're doing demos, so we don't want to wait that long. We'll just wait five seconds. Do. We'll say four. Oh, we'll just do this. Let's do this right here. Copy that. We're going to go through all the buildings. Cool. And when we go through them, we're going to check to see if a building is broken, right? But remember, welds have all the welds associated with that building uh, for I, right? So whatever I we're on. So what we can do is we can send welds in here, the ith value of the welds array. And then we'll replace our model. And what we'll do for the replacing of the model, I'm going to send the entire build array in. I'm going to send the entire buildings array in, and I'm going to send the index for that particular building because I want to change things in place. And so I'm going to pass these by reference. If you know the difference between passing by reference and passing by value, if you don't, that's fine. Just, uh, you just go ahead and copy it. You'll start figuring it out over time. Some things change when you pass them into functions and some things they don't. So like this, if I pass this in, if I change that in a function, it's not going to change. But if I change this in a function, it will, because this is a table or an array. It's a data structure. This is just a variable, right? That's a tricky part in computer science. So let's get our welds. We replaced the building. Now we have to let's just go like this. Now we have to get a new set of welds and we have to unanchor everything once we put a new one out there, right? Cool beans. So is broken. What's going to happen here? We're going to go through the welds to see if uh, the building is healthy or not. Say so local total. It's going to be the total welds in the building. Local count is going to be the enabled welds. We'll start that out at zero say for P and W. So remember our welds are a key value pair with a part and the associated weld to the part. So we'll do P and W for part and weld in pairs. Welds do uh, total welds will increase no matter what. And then we're only going to count the enable welds for our health. So if W is enabled, then count plus equals one. Now we need to get the percentage of healthy welds. Let's do a variable for that local percent equals is that count over total. Multiply that by 100 because most people like percents to be between zero and 100. We'll check to see if percent is less than 70%. Then we're going to say, no, this is broken. I spell percent right. Oh, I spell percent wrong right here. There we go. Percent, percent. Else, return false. It's good. It's got a lot of welds that are good. Cool. So if it is broken, then we'll replace the model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my buildings array. Right? Not the, not the build array, but the buildings Right. I'm going to need arguments here. Let's see what we passed in. 
uh, we passed in the build array, the buildings, and the index. Let's copy these, right? Replace model, put these here. Yeah, so we're gonna get these buildings for the ith value, and then I'm gonna destroy it. They spell destroy right, sometimes they spell it the story. Because right, they're all blown apart. So all the pieces are all floating around in the world. Let's go ahead and destroy the whole thing so we don't have to worry about it. Now, let's go ahead. Should we do a wait? We could do a wait while it's being built. Or we could just build it instantly. Yeah, let's just wait a couple seconds. Cool. In between each so they pop up. Plus, you might want to do a building sound. I did a building sound in my video. Let's get our buildings. I. We're going to clone a new one. We're going to do exactly what we did down here. Copy, paste it, boom, cool. And then if you wanted a sound, you might want to do the sound here, right? Building sound, sound, and then you would stop the sound down here when it's done. Or you could do the sound in the loop if you wanted to. Just giving you a little bit of info. All right, this is it. We're good. We're, we're, we're ready to go. We're... Um, we're explodable now. Cool. Boom. All right. Cool beans. Can we drag another thing in there? Look at that got replaced. Let's drag another thing. Let's go toolbox and we'll get a shack. I'm going to get the Roblox one because I know there's no viruses and stuff in it. This one right here. Oh, it's I don't think it is a Roblox one, but it is highly endorsed. Cool beans. So we have it in the workspace. It won't blow up like that. Let's go ahead and make a copy of it. Control D. So this one won't blow up. This one, we're going to make it blow up. We're going to put it in the models and explodables. And let's see if we can blow it up. We'll compare it. All right. Here's my explodable one. Yeah. Here's my non-explodable one. Cool beans. I got replaced. There we go. So you want the replacement to be uh, longer and then maybe building sounds and stuff. But I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, good luck with that. I'll see you in the next video.